we are going to look at the formation of an imine from an aldehyde or a ketone. And this is done with a primary amine. That's very important that you use a primary amine. I'm going to use the same ketone that I've been using for all of these lessons. I'm going to use acetone again. Okay. Now when you do these types of reactions, it is important that you do these properly. So you must use that primary amine. And you do also need to have a proton source available, but it's very important that when you do this, that you're not very acidic. The pH has to be kept in a very close region, and that's usually between about 4 to 5. If the pH is any lower, you're most likely to protonate the nitrogen and make something like an ammonium ion. And if that is the case, the nitrogen can't be a nucleophile. It'd be protonated. You're done before you even begin because it is a weak base. So even though there is a little bit of acid present, you have to be very careful that the pH is in the right region. Amine formation is extremely slow. Um, so you kind of need to be very careful with it. It's not real fast. It does occur and it does occur in acid. That's why the pH has to be slightly acidic, but it can't be in strong acid because you will protonate the amine, and then you can't do the chemistry that you are hoping for here. So be very careful with the pH of your solution when you're doing these. Just make sure you write on the bottom of the arrow that the pH is somewhere between 4 and 5. That way you will not protonate your amine. Now, amines are nucleophiles. They are electron pair donors, and electron pair donors love to add to carbonyl carbons. That's what they do, and we break the pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Oxygen being more electronegative takes the electrons. We've seen this time and time again, and we make an intermediate. Oops, let me change the color again. Now overall this is a neutral intermediate, but you've got charge separation here. Okay, so what's going to happen now is that you would do a proton transfer through solvent from the nitrogen up onto the oxygen. And typically your amines are liquids, so you can use that. I know you can use other things too. I'm just going to use the amine that I have. So it's going to be able to do a proton transfer to solvent. So we're going to pick up the proton, give electrons back. That was the proton transfer to the solvent. Now we do a proton transfer from the solvent. So the oxygen will pick up the proton and give electrons back so that we get this neutral tetrahedral intermediate. And this is called the carbonyl amine. It's a specific name for this type of an intermediate. Okay, and that is our intermediate chemical species at this point in time. Now remember, you are in a slightly acidic environment. So there are protons available, and I'm going to just show that as a hydronium ion, since you are at pH 4 to 5. And again, we've watched the pH so that we don't protonate the nitrogen of our solvent. You could technically protonate the oxygen 
or the nitrogen of the carbonylamine. Either one is an electron pair donor. But to get us somewhere productive, you want to show it from the OH group, not the nitrogen. And again, either one of these could do it, but make sure you get the one that gets you somewhere productive. So we're going to show oxygen acting as the electron pair donor to pick up the proton from the acid. And as this occurs, we make a new intermediate. Now what we have is a very good leaving group. We've also made some water over here, but we've got a good leaving group in water. And the nitrogen acts as an electron pair donor toward the carbonyl carbon, what was the carbonyl carbon, and is making a pi bond. You can't have five bonds, so you break the o oxygen carbon bond. Since the oxygen has a positive charge and is pulling those electrons toward it since it's more electronegative. So we're kicking out water as our leaving group. wrong color again. Okay. And this chemical species does have some resonance stabilization of its positive charge. That's why this is favorable to do. It's because there is some resonance. The one that I've already drawn there on the left is the predominant resonance structure. But the one here on the right does exist. Okay. Those are in equilibrium with one another. And the one on the left, again, is the predominant resonance structure. At this point in time, the water that is forming, or you can use some more of your initial amine, but it's probably the water, will act as an electron pair donor to pick up the proton on this nitrogen and give electrons back. And you can do this from either resonance structure, so pick one and do it from that one. If you want to show it from this resonance structure, pick up the proton and then use this pair of electrons to make the pi bond. So at the end of the day, you regenerate the acid, and that's important since you maintain the pH of the solution. And we make this carbon-nitrogen double bond, which is what an imine is. It has this carbon-nitrogen double bond, and that's how we do it.